Good morning, I'm Calvin Samuel, Methodist Minister for Rayleigh, Rochford and Hockley. Welcome to Churches for Rayleigh Daily Meditations during Holy Week. Today's meditation will be led by the Reverend Ricky Rue, who is pastor at Rayleigh Baptist Church. Let's listen to Ricky now. Now, as we continue our reflections through Holy Week and towards Easter, let's look together at Matthew chapter 21. And I'm going to be reading from verse 12 to 17. Jesus at the temple. Jesus entered the temple courts and drove out all those who were buying and selling there. He overturned the tables of the money changers and the benches of those selling doves. It is written, he said to them, My house will be called a house of prayer, but you are making it a den of robbers. The blind and the lame came to him at the temple and he healed them. But when the chief priests and the teachers of the law saw the wonderful things he did and the children shouting in the temple courts, Hosanna to the son of David, they were indignant. Do you hear what these children are saying? They asked him. Yes, replied Jesus. Have you never read? From the lips of children and infants, you, Lord, have called forth your praise. And he left them and went out of the city to Bethany, where he spent the night. Jesus had arrived in Jerusalem for the Passover, but even though he'd been greeted as a king when he arrived, he didn't go to the palace. Instead, he went to the temple. And entering the temple, he discovered that the outer courts had been turned into a marketplace. The only money which was acceptable to be given as an offering was Jewish money. So anyone with Greek or Roman money had to change it, but they were being charged a fee for their service. Not only that, but a visit to the temple would also have involved some form of animal sacrifice. And and so there were animals for sale in the courtyard, mostly doves and pigeons, one of the cheaper options. And it's not hard to imagine that those selling the animals would have increased their prices to take advantage of the extra trade from visitors at Passover. But for the Jews, the only way to be made right with God was to go to the temple and to make their offerings, either by cash or animal sacrifice. And the traders at the temple were at best extorting money out of them. Or in the worst cases, they were stopping those who couldn't afford the increased prices from making themselves right with God. And at such an important time of the year too. Jesus could not allow this to continue. When Jesus discovers that his father's house rather than being a house of prayer, has been turned into a den of robbers. He turns over the tables of the money changers and of those selling livestock and he drives them out of the temple. He totally disrupts the trading which is taking place and he makes himself enemies along the way. But there was more going on here than just Jesus' anger. Once Jesus had cleared the courtyard, the real business of the temple could take place. The blind and the lame came to him and Jesus healed them. People were made right with God as they met with him, this time in a a more personal way than through the usual sacrifice. Having already stirred up the Jewish leaders by his arrival in Jerusalem and disrupted the commerce at the temple and declaring it my father's house, a subtle way of stating that he was God's son, now he is irritating the Jewish leaders again by performing miraculous healings in the temple. They saw what he'd been doing. They heard the children in the temple crying out, Hosanna to the son of David, just as the people had done on the streets when he arrived in Jerusalem. The chief priests say, do you hear what these children are saying about you? And they ask as if the children are insulting Jesus. But actually, the children are praising him and declaring that he is the promised Messiah 
from the family line of King David. Jesus' response to the chief priests is fantastic. Taken at face value, he seems to be saying, this shouldn't surprise you. This is to be expected. On another level, by quoting the Old Testament to them, which he knows they know inside out. He seems to snub their position of authority as teachers of the law, because they should know this stuff. And here is the, the genius of Jesus' answer to them. The quote he gives is from Psalm 8 and verse 2, but he doesn't quote the whole verse. The part he quotes suggests that the praise of the children has been established by God. The full verse suggests that somehow the praise of these children will drown out enemy talk. Perhaps Jesus is making it clear to the Jewish leaders that he is onto them. He knows what they're already plotting and he already knows the outcome. Let's pray. Father God, would you peel back the layers of your story? Help us to enter into it and to encounter you as we do. And would you grant us eyes to see and minds which understand the depths of your love, your plan and your grace. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you and thank you for joining us.